Yeah, look, it's been a roller coaster ride in lithium markets over the last 12 months. We're now seeing the spot price down 85% from its highs only a year ago. So what we're seeing going on here really is that back in 2022, there was clearly a lot of irrational exuberance in the lithium market with people expecting that demand was just going to go up and up rapidly. And that led to a lot of uh, stockpiling of lithium, which saw the spot price really increase. Now what we're seeing in the last six to 12 months is that a lot of these stockpiles in the supply chain are being unwound. And that's not just with lithium, it's also with the finished battery products as well. And so we have a situation where the end users, which are the car manufacturers and also the battery manufacturers, simply haven't had the demand they initially expected. And so they've started to run down some of their surplus supplies within the chain. And so is this the normal cycle of a market finding balance or is it the bursting of a bubble? Well, I do believe that lithium still has a bright future ahead, but there's no doubt that lithium was and still is somewhat an immature market. So we don't have such a developed market like in the copper and nickel markets with lots of financial instruments that, that, are, that are traded in those markets. So what that means is that lithium is probably susceptible to higher highs, but also lower lows. And over the next decade, we'll see that the lithium market will mature a lot like other commodities and we should see less volatility in the market. But we do believe that the electric vehicle thematic is still a long-term thematic. We do believe that that's still going to increase long-term demand for lithium quite substantially. And so we do believe going into 2025, 2026, you are going to see another bull cycle within the lithium market. Has the lithium price found a bottom or does it have further mm. to go? Yeah, it's an extraordinarily tough question to ask. We probably never saw it getting as low as it has. Um, on some benchmarks now, it's down at about US $850 a tonne. We probably saw it stopping at around 1200 US a tonne. So it's below now where we believe the marginal cost producer is. Now, when you're analysing any commodity price, it's important to understand where is the marginal cost producer. Um, because once the spot price gets below that, then you'll start to see some participants come out of the market. And we've already seen that in Australia. Core Lithium has already come out and said that they've stopped mining at their project in the Northern Territory because they're simply not making money. We saw IGO just this week, who's one of the lowest cost producers in the world. They've come out and said they're going to reduce production by about 9% and they're going to reduce sales by about 20%. Now, they're still making money at these prices, but they've made the decision and their joint venture partners have made the decision to reduce production now because they don't see the immediate need to be running at such a high amount. It is becoming increasingly difficult for operators to find capital. When will that change? Mm. And how do you view the opportunities mm. for mergers and acquisitions in this sector? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's getting in increasingly difficult to find capital. So what does that mean? That means any of these projects that were out there that haven't yet got financing will really struggle to get developed now over the next two or three years. And so that's going to reduce future supply in the market because capital's really dried up there. With regards to merger and acquisitions, we saw a, very, a large amount of activity last year where we saw mineral resources, we saw Gina Reinhart. They are very active in Australia getting blocking stakes in a number of companies like Azure, uh, like Wildcat and others. And what we've really seen there is that they've expressed a, a long-term view that they believe the lithium markets are going to be um, a very good place for them to be. And so they've really engaged in a big land grab. So here in Western Australia, We've already seen that occur. Um, I do think we may see some more opportunistic um, acquisitions now. We've got some projects that are fairly advanced, that have got very well drilled out ore bodies that are now needing capital. Uh, Lion Town is one which is very topical, which had a, a failed takeover bid on it at $3 a share, now trading closer to a dollar a share. That's probably going to attract some interest. I'm again. going to jump in there. Is Gina Reinhart likely to launch a takeover bid for Lion Town soon? She has been accumulating a significant shareholding. Mm. Yeah, look, clearly she's demonstrated that she's got interest in acquiring some of these long life assets. Um, and I would expect that we will see more acquisitions in this space. Gina Reinhart clearly is in a position where she's getting uh, super profits from her iron ore business, and it would make sense for her to deploy some of those into future looking metals. So whether she makes a, a play for Lion Town in full or it's another asset, I do expect that she'll remain active in the year ahead, and particularly in asset space here in Western Australia where she, she knows the regulatory environment, she knows the mining codes, she has established relationships with mining services companies. I think that will be her focus. Miners met the Federal Resources Minister and the WA Mines Minister last week. Miners are reported to have asked for help underwriting infrastructure hubs and tax credits. Is that justified? 
Well, I think that um, uh, business owners will always try to get the best deal that they can for their industry, and I think that they're entitled to do that. I think, I think what they're trying to really um, impress upon politicians of today is we don't want to miss out on another opportunity to become a processor of the commodity. So in iron ore, for decades, we've dug it up and we've shipped it overseas to be turned into steel, and we've missed a big part of the value chain. And I think that a lot of the miners today are suggesting, you know, Australia could do more than just digging up the dirt and sending it offshore. We should be adding more value to it here. It would create jobs in Australia. It would create new industries. And it would create more taxes and, and more revenue streams for the government. And I think that's really what they're trying to impress upon the government here, is that we've got an industry that is still relatively in its infancy. Australia could still be a world leader if we had the, the th sort of our political leadership that we need to try to establish a long-term industry here. Giuliano Salatena, thank you. Thank you.